The man who found it says it had a business card identifying the owner as Lauren Bassett, who was on board the plane with Kennedy and his wife. It had a business card in um, sort of as an identification um, card, and it said uh, Morgan Stanley, and then it had the name of whoever's business card it was. It said Lauren Bassett, vice president underneath that, and then it had an address in New York. Um, and, you know, I just had a, 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 an awful feeling in my stomach. My friends were watching. They were standing on the beach. I dragged it out of the water. Everyone was very, very upset. And we, we pulled it up. We put it where we were sitting, and we called the police. An aircraft headrest has also been found 200 yards off the coast. U.S. Coast Guard boats will continue the search. The last radio contact with the plane was made as it approached the island. The plane was en route from New Jersey to Martha's Vineyard. Kennedy and his wife were to attend the wedding of Kennedy's cousin Rory, a daughter of the late Senator Robert Kennedy. In a briefing at the Pentagon, the head of Air Force Search and Rescue Operations, Lieutenant Colonel Steve Rourke, said no extra efforts are being made because of John F. Kennedy Jr.'s celebrity. Well, we treat all searches the same. There is no difference be, uh, between celebrity or, or non-celebrity. Our job uh, is for all the citizens of the United States. And uh, I believe it was uh, approximately 3 a.m. local time that we got the, uh, the information from the FAA that the aircraft was overdue. Um, they had received word from uh, family members. Uh, our routine at that point is to start investigating because uh, a large uh, proportion of these overdue aircraft do turn up uh, simply at an airport somewhere. So we started our investigation. Uh, which turned up uh, no results. We started working very closely with the Coast Guard at that time because of the, the uh, water involvement. And I believe the Coast Guard was the first agency to launch aircraft at uh, uh, around 7.30 to 7.55 uh, this morning. The plane being sought is a Piper Saratoga 2TC. It's a high-performance single-engine six-seater. It has a 36-foot wingspan, and with its 120-gallon fuel capacity, it has a range of 900 nautical miles. Kennedy's plane left a busy regional airport in New Jersey. Gary Tuckman is there with more information. The Essex County Airport here in Fairfield, New Jersey, about 45 minutes west of New York City, is a very large general aviation airport. Most private airports where private planes fly in and out do not have control towers. This one does. 251,000 planes land or take off here each year. It's about 700 planes a day. That's a lot for a private airport. 350 planes are housed here, including, according to officials here at this airport, John F. Kennedy's planes. He had two planes housed here over the last year. John F. Kennedy Jr. was very well known to the people here at this airport, 45 minutes west of his home in New York City. With us right now, another gentleman who's seen him here before, Gary Falavine. Gary Falavine's also a pilot. He has a Piper Cherokee, very similar to the Piper Saratoga that John F. Kennedy Jr. has flown. You've also flown to Martha's Vineyard from this airport. First of all, when you fly at night from here to Martha's Vineyard, anything you have to keep in mind? Well, you're flying, you know, um, over somewhat water, so it's, you know, always a good idea to stay as close to the coast as you possibly can for safety. You know, when you have a single-engine airplane. When you have a single-engine airplane, it's always a good idea to file a flight plan also. Um, that's but, a very, of course, when you're flying under visual flight rules, that's not a law. You don't have to fly. It's not a law to fly. You can fly um, VFR conditions as long as the visibility is three miles and better and the ceiling is a thousand feet and higher. You can fly, uh, legally fly VFR, which I understand he did. But it is possible when you fly from here in New Jersey to Martha's Vineyard to stay fairly close to land. There's an island chain leading from Long Island to Martha's Vineyard. There's Fisher's Island, New York. That's, there's also Block Island, Rhode that's Island. That's correct. correct. You can stay pretty close to the coastline, but there still is water over water from the Connecticut coastline over to uh, Martha's Vineyard that you have. So there's a certain body of water you have to uh, you cross over. Final question, but there's a report that there was haze last night. What kind of problems would that cause when you're flying over the ocean to Martha's Vineyard? Well, if the visibility starts to get low, um, the haze could present a problem because, I mean, your visual flight references become lost and the haze cuts out your uh, horizon. And at night, that even adds more difficulty. So that, you know, that definitely is a factor. Gary, his plane stood out, correct? It was a, a red aircraft? Uh, yeah, I drove through the airport last night around uh, 6.30, 7 o'clock, and I came through with my girlfriend, and I even said, I said, there's John F. Kennedy's plane. And when I heard the news this morning, I just couldn't believe it. And I heard it. Gary, thanks for talking with us. You're welcome. As you can tell, Gary and lots of other people here have either seen or knew John F. Kennedy Jr. from flying here for the past year. And as you might imagine, there's a great deal of sadness. 
president.